viewers, and welcome to another episode of Real Woman with Nikkei Adeyemi. It is my pleasure and um, delight to bring God's word to you right where you are. So whether you're watching um, on your local station or international station, call your friends, send them a message, tell them to tune in right now and just come and enjoy um, the word that I'm about to share. So hang in there. Don't go away. I'll be right back after this. We're back. Today I'll be talking about hindrances to purpose. What are some of the things that can hinder us fulfilling our purpose? Um, the other time we shared from the book of Esther, how she stepped up, how she said yes to her purpose for that season, um, how she received strength and clarity. But what, could, what are the things that could have hindered her from fulfilling her purpose? What are the things that hinder you and I from fulfilling our purpose? I want to talk about this today because if we know, if we are aware of those things that hinder us, those things that could take us back, draw us back, or prevent us you know, from living that life God has ordained for us, from, you know, walking in God's purpose for our lives, um, even as we seek clarity, then we can be mindful. We can be more prayerful. Uh, you see, when you are aware of something, you are better able to deal with it. Okay, so the first one I would say is fear. Fear. Fear can hinder our purpose because fear causes us to shrink back. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. <laughs> so walking in love would help us, you know, would help us to um, limit accepting fear, walking in the love of God. You use the love of God to counter fear. It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for he is with me, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. So consciousness of God's presence, conscious, being conscious that God is with you would greatly reduce fear. But when we give in to fear totally, we might completely miss our purpose. We might completely go off track and be doing what we're not supposed to be doing. All right, out of fear, we go embrace something that looks easier, that looks more comfortable, or that looks maybe more acceptable by people, you know, um, because we're afraid of rejection. I don't know what you're afraid of today or what you might be afraid of. Hey, get over it. Receive God's word. Receive strength as a fear you are not going to have me. Fear not. The phrase fear not appears in the Bible 365, in 365 places, which means one for each day. That is how much fear appears. Fear not, fear not. People in Bible days too were, had fear, but they received God's word, they received courage, and they moved on. And some did act out in fear, and at the end of the day, it was a disaster. But you see, with God, there's healing. With God, there's always a turnaround. Bitterness, complaining, complaining, being bitter with someone. Um, and closely linked to that is unforgiveness. Friends, I know many of us have been there. I've been there as well. All right, there was a time I felt so hurt by someone and I had to ask God for grace to forgive because it was tough. Letting go was tough, but I realized that I had to let go. Even for my own sake, I had to let go. I shouldn't give that much power, you know, to uh, someone who has hurt me, thinking about them day and night, complaining, rehearsing the situation over and over in my mind. What does that bring to me? Does it bring freedom? It only brings pain and bondage. So this is a big one. Unforgiveness. Let go. Um, someone might be there and say, hey, you don't know what they did to me. And I don't know because we, it's at different levels. The depth of our pain is at different levels. But at some point in time, we're all going to have to ask God for the grace to forgive. And so we can be free, so our souls can be free to soar and to rejoice. When we get to the point where someone offends us and we are in deep bitterness, and every day is just complaints out of our mouth and we don't even have time 
or the presence of mind to even praise God, uh, then that's deep trouble. That's deep trouble because God is not the culprit. God is not the one that did you in or did you bad, right? A very classic example is um, Joseph. Joseph had a dream, but his brothers did him bad because they were envious of him. They wanted to take him out. They didn't want to see him alive. They wanted to suppress him, okay? But in God's mercy, he lived. We know the story. In God's mercy, they sold him to slavery and they thought he's as good as dead. But that was the only window of escape that he needed. So right there, he could praise God for that, right? It would have been difficult, but right there, he could praise God and say, Lord, I thank you. I'm alive. Yes, I'm a slave, which I shouldn't be. His father made him a coat of many colors. And if he would think about all of that, he would complain and he would have opportunity to be bitter. But then if he would think about the fact that he's alive, there is hope, he can still become something, can still, that dream can still be fulfilled, no matter how, I mean, look very bleak. Your dream can still be fulfilled. It doesn't matter who did you in and set you back many steps, <laughs> okay, or demoted you at work. It caused the demotion. Someone framed you. He was thrown in prison for doing nothing, literally, right? But there was hope, and then he still rose to a place of prominence. Oh, my God. He still fulfilled his purpose. Even the journey looked painful and long, but he still fulfilled his purpose. I like to sometimes look at it this way. You know, and I know I've been there. There were times when it's just been so difficult to even praise God and say, what is this? But then when I catch myself and God's word bubbles up in my heart, I realize that, hey, it's someone that is alive that can complain. It's someone that is alive that can feel hurt. Okay? So, okay, thank you, Lord, I'm alive. And you're able to remove this pain from my heart. So I don't know who I'm speaking to right now. You might need to connect with this right now. That that pain, that heaviness in your heart, that bitterness be removed, be eased. Okay, there's beauty for ashes and there's the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I speak to that heaviness of heart. Be lifted in Jesus' name. The next point I like to look at, um, pick, is carelessness. We're looking at the things that can hinder us fulfilling purpose, hindrances to purpose, those things that can limit us that, or that can totally even derail us from fulfilling God's assignment and God's purpose for our lives. Carelessness, being careless. Don't be careless about your destiny. Don't be careless about anything. Don't be careless about your life, about your words, um, don't be careless. Don't say, oh, this is how I am. No, seek to be better, seek to improve. Okay, we have different temperaments, we have different personal personalities, and of course you've got to accept yourself and the way you are wired, but don't be careless about your life. Don't be careless with your thoughts. Proverbs 4 says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart. Don't be careless about your heart. Don't let negative stuff get into your heart and mind. Don't let evil things get into your mind. Be careful to guard your heart. So that means we need to be careful and not careless about what we hear, what we see, what we watch over and over. Some of us have had nightmares. You need to look at what you're watching. <laughs> what are you allowing to get into your heart? Okay? So carelessness is, is, is a very important one. When you know what your purpose is, or you're in that journey, or you know your why, at least for the season you are in, then you get into things that support that, that enhance your growth <laughs> in that area, not things that will take away from you and leave you confused due to carelessness. Thank you, Lord. Don't be careless. Careless about your time with God. Careless about spending time with yourself. Don't be careless to neglect your grooming, your diet, you know, and um, what you eat, what you put into your body. Don't be careless. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
because this can lead to a total, total derailment. It can lead to confusion and lack of clarity concerning your purpose. If you know that you're an athlete, for example, ha, you train, you're not careless about what you eat. Ha, you're not careless about your, physic, your strength, your physical strength because you're an athlete. You're a runner, you're a swimmer, you know that you're in the game to win, to win medals for your community, for yourself, for your community, to the glory of God, for your nation. So you're not careless, okay? Um, so that's it. We're not careless when it comes to examinations. You're not careless to, to not read, to what movies all night and then all day and say, okay, I'm strolling to the exam hall. No, you're careful to study. And trust God for, 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 you know, his favor and for the, a positive result and the best result possible. Carelessness, this is an entirely, entirely huge, huge topic, okay? Carelessness, whether the younger, in a younger generation or in an older generation, carelessness affects us all. We've got to pay attention to what we're paying attention to. Pay attention to your thoughts. Don't be careless about your thoughts. Okay, thoughts are things. And as we think on things, we think on negative things long enough, we see negativity in our lives. Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 6 says, we should um, be thankful we should not be careless about our thoughts. We should, with thanksgiving, come to God when we are worried. If anyone is worried, if anyone is um, um, suffering, he said, with thanksgiving, bring your request to me and the peace that passes all understanding will fill your heart and mind. And he says, whatsoever things, that's in verse 8, I believe, Proverbs 4, 8, whatsoever things are lovely, are pure, are good reports, Think on these things and the peace of God will fill your heart. So it says we should not be careless about the things that we think about. Mm. That's so, so important there. So we can fulfill our purpose, so we can stay on track. Laziness is another one. Hey, laziness, laziness. We receive um, strength to do things that we should do part time. Um, some people are suffering, going through depression. That's different from being lazy. Depression leaves you not having energy to do the things you're passionate about, the things you would normally do. So it could look like laziness to people on the outside because it's difficult to make your bed, it's difficult to pick up your books and read, it's difficult to do that assignment, it's difficult to get your clothes or your laundry done. And for some, it's a seasonal thing or for a period. For some, it's gone on and on. First of all, I speak right now to depression. Anyone going through that, I speak to the spirit of depression. Go in the name of Jesus. Just go. That mental imbalance, go from their lives right now in Jesus' name. It's spiritual, it's mental, it's physical. Yes, people have categorized it differently. So get all the help that you can get. Some would need medication to correct um, the level of... Um, the serotonin in their, in their minds and all that. Whatever, get help. See a counselor, a therapist, okay, prayer, deliverance. God is good and he has ordained resources for us. He has ordained tools. Doctors have been equipped to help in various um, areas of ailment and illnesses. However, when we have things that persist, even after seeing doctors and being treated, we know that we still have to resort to the spiritual. And so, like I was saying that laziness, well, when someone suffers depression, it could come out looking as laziness. And in that season, they've got to get all the help that they can get. So don't judge people. Don't judge people, don't call people names. We're just saying here that if you're lazy or you're struggling with getting things done, just know that it could hinder your purpose, it could derail you, it could slow you down. So work on it so that you're able to get out of that mode. Laziness, procrastination, you know, and all the like. I see healing coming through for us in Jesus' name. Every hindrance to us fulfilling purpose, every, everything in our way, okay, begins to give way right now because we have understanding being indifferent to life, being indifferent to, indifferent to people, 
if we, for example, if you know you're called to be a minister or a pastor, you know, like me, you have to love people. You cannot afford to be indifferent towards people, to be uncaring. Look at your why. Look at what you are called to. All right, if you're a mother, you must have love for your child, at least. Even if you don't have love for other people's children. Look at your, how you're wired. Look at your calling. Look at your why. And look at the things that want to derail you. For example, when I look at anger, and there are times I want to be angry over something, I say, anger, no, I'm going to take you out before you take me out. I'm going to deal with you before you deal with me. That is the attitude we need to have towards the things that would hinder us from walking in God's purpose for, for our lives. And there I would dare to say from walk, walking joyfully, joyfully in what God has called us to do. I will put that in because life should not be a drudgery. Life should not be a dirge. Life should not be, okay, I just have to do it because it's what God has called me to do. No, we should have joy in serving God. We should have joy in serving our community, our generation. We should have joy in serving whatever, whether you are in marketing, whether you're in uh, sales of product, whether you are in editing, production, content creator, Doctor, father, mother, whatever you are, student, <laughs> there should be joy in the journey. There should be joy in and passion in doing what we are doing. When that is missing, we've got to check it. We've got to recalibrate and think again. What is hindering me? What is causing me to lack joy in this? I'm not, I'm not saying that it's always rosy, rosy, rosy. There are seasons of hardship, there are seasons of pain and stress, right? I'm a traveling minister. Sometimes it's stressful to get on a flight to go from one city to another, from one country to another. <laughs> no thanks to COVID, which we are coming out of now, you know. And it's been great also that we can do things virtually, get on the Zoom, have our meetings, you know, and all of that. Sometimes that too is not comfortable after a while, right? So nothing comes really that easy when you're on the journey of purpose. But there's an element of joy that should come to your soul when you are doing what you are called to do. Yeah, there is an element that when you look at this side, you're like, okay, at least I get to do this. At least I get to meet people. At least I get to do that. And there may be elements of what you do that you may not like. You may not like having to dress up to create that content, or you love creating content, but you know you have to dress up a certain way to do it. So it's always a compromise here and there. But altogether, let's have a positive outlook that God is good and it's a privilege to be alive and to be chosen to fulfill purpose or to, to um, impact a life or two or more. So it's a privilege for me to come into our homes, to speak, to be here, whether on YouTube, whether on your TV station right now as you're watching, because I know that lives are being transformed through my speaking. And when I want to feel tired or procrastinate or when I want to feel lazy about it, I go back and I remember my why. And I remember that hmm, lives are going to be changed. Lives are going to be touched just by my showing up to speak. Strength comes to me and I then do not allow that laziness or, you know, laid backness to derail me from showing up in doing what I need to do. And so today I believe that that strength will come to us, understanding comes to us, and we can actually cheat the enemy in his game because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's John 10, 9. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In John 10, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So friends, I pray for you today that you have strength, you have life, because Jesus has come to give you life. And so till next time, keep shining. Keep shining your light. Keep working on your purpose. Keep working. Keep doing life. Keep on being the blessing that you can to other people in your community around you. Okay? Keep, keep preparing for your time. And if this is a season that you feel it's just a time to prepare and hide, then that's your purpose for that season. Okay? Keep preparing to be better. 
And don't forget to be kind to yourself. Spend time in God's presence. Spend time meditating in his word and spend time with yourself. Care for yourself as well so that you are not sidetracked completely from fulfilling your purpose. Next time I'll talk about how do we enhance our purpose. Today I've been talking about hindrances to fulfilling your purpose. But next time I'll talk about enhances. How do we enhance the things that enhance our purposeful, that enhance fulfilling our purpose. So friends, stay blessed and bye for now.